Welcome back to our continued reflection on the importance of the cross. My dear friends, as I was speaking to you, a cross on the left side, a cross on the right side and a cross in the center. We never think, we never even discuss, we never even talk about the two crosses on which the two thieves were hung on the mount. But everybody talks all over the world on the one cross that has been in the center on which Jesus was hung. Why this cross has become such important? It is just because Jesus was raised from the dead. It is the resurrection of Jesus that has given the cross of Jesus such an important thing. Just because he was raised, the cross has its power. Just because Jesus was been raised, the cross has its importance. Just because he was been raised, the cross has become paramount and permanent of all, my dear friends. Therefore, what we read here is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 and uh, onwards if you read. 12, 13 and 14. Now, if Jesus Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection? 14. If Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. And one more thing, that is 15 verse 19. For if this life only we have hoped in Jesus Christ, we are of all people the most to be pitified. My dear friends, one of the central themes of the Bible is Jesus has been raised from the dead. As a result, the cross on which he was hung has been, the cross on which Jesus has been hung has become an important symbol of salvation for you and for me. Therefore, our attention from the problems, difficulties and struggles and even crucifixions of our day-to-day -day sufferings must direct our attention from these to the cross and its resurrection. That is the second moment to which we are being called. And the third, my dear friends, remember, when the women came to the tomb, they were absolutely shattered, they were broken, and they were in really in tears. For two, three reasons. Number one, they hoped, they expected that Jesus to be the real Messiah, the real Savior, who will even establish a kingdom and even fight against the, the Roman Empire and even to deliver the people of Israel. But one fine day, this Jesus is been dead and he is been crucified. The second thing what we see here, my dear friends, Jesus has selected 12 apostles. Three years he took with them. And in his, all his preachings, his miracles, his, his wonders and everything, the 12 were witnesses. And the most disheartening thing is, one among the twelve has betrayed Jesus. The one who tr him, whom he trusted, the one who he selected, the hope to for. Therefore, the closer and the dear one person becomes. My dear friends, it is much more unbearable, the betrayal. The trading activity is become most unbearable. Now remember here why this woman on the way to the tomb, for all these reasons, they were in tears, they were sad, they were broken. And two important words the Bible says here, one thing, they were perplexed, second thing, they were terrified. My dear friends, an emotionally matured person, psychologists say, have 75 emotions, four major emotions and all minor subtle emotions we all have. One example to say, 
Anger is a minor small emotion and the rage is a superlative, the highest form of emotion, highest form of anger is called rage. Second thing is fear. Fear is a small basic emotion that we all have and the highest form of fear is terrified. There's two, these two words are written here in the Bible. Now, what happens when the emotions take control of a person? Whether we are in anger or in rage or we are in fear or in completely terrified, when emotions take control of a person, our mind doesn't work, our brain doesn't work, our thinking doesn't work. That's why it is said, when you are emotionally taken over, do not make any important decisions. Emotions are like clouds, they come and they go. They appear and they disappear. They come and they go. They are not a permanent. Therefore, any decisions what a person takes when the emotionally being stirred up and taken up, we regret when the emotions are being slowly moved away from our life. Therefore, in a state of overwhelmed feelings, my dear friends, our brain doesn't work, our thinking doesn't work, our reason doesn't work. Now you see here, the women, they forgot about everything. They forgot about everything. But the angel sitting there reminded them what Jesus had spoken. Very well see here. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the man said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Now this is important. Remember, how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to the sinners and be crucified and on the third day be rise again. Then they remembered the words of the Lord. The important thing is Jesus had spoken to them very well, very clearly in his teachings that the Son of Man must suffer at the human hands. The son, of man, the son of man will be killed. The son of man is to be crucified and he is to be buried and on the third day he will rise again. But then this women, overwhelmed by the human emotions, have forgotten everything of the words of Jesus and they never remembered anything. But when the angels reminded them, by the word of God says this, they remembered what God had spoken to them. The same thing we also read in the same chapter, Luke 24, the walk to Emmaus. The two apostles walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, my dear friends, they were very sad. They were very broken. They never thought about whatever Jesus had explained to them while he was with them. Therefore, how Jesus is addressing them on verse 25. Oh, how foolish you are and how slow to heart to believe that all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And this is more important, 27. Then beginning with the Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. My dear friends, when Jesus explained to them, when Jesus interpreted to them, when Jesus narrated to them, once again, God's word, they remembered what God had spoken to them. Now, when we remember, my dear friends, that the miracles at the tomb, the surprises at the tomb, how progressively from a human emotional thinking, how progressively from the pain, sorrow, sadness and brokenness of the human experiences, how their attention is being focused towards the Lord, how their attention is focused towards the resurrection, how their attention is focused from the world to the word of God. Therefore, in a life of a Christian, in the life of a believer, in the life of a real true Catholic, my dear friends, remember, the same miracles, 
the same wonders, the same changes that the Lord has done in their life, He will do in our life as well. For it is not a life of disappointment. It is not a life of sorrows. It is not a life of sadness and brokenness. But this is a life where God's word must remind us. God's spirit must strengthen us. God's spirit must lead us. And we have a God of surprises. We have a God of miracles. We have a God of wonders. And that God has been raised from the dead. Therefore, in the season of reason, therefore, in this season of Easter, remember that our God can do wonders, our God can do miracles at any broken, any disappointed, any sadness and any difficulties of life that you and I face. Because this life, we must expect them. There is no one day in your life and in my life where all the problems have been over. There is no one day in your life and in my life, there is no more tension, no more worries, no more anxieties, no more tears, no more sadness and no more brokenness. This will come. You and I have to expect them. But the greater thing is, we have a God of surprises. We have a God who is risen and He can change your life and my life. He can change any situations the way He wants it. My dear friends, today we shall pray that this God of surprises may surprise you at any nook and corner of your life. This God who can change the situations may change your present situation into a resurrection. Therefore, let us pray. God, our loving Father, we place before you all these brothers and sisters listening to your word. As your angels reminded the women of your word and all the prophecies and the scriptures we pray at any moment of our life let your angel let your holy spirit work through our brothers and sisters to remind us of your plan in our life that we may simply believe that you can do miracles you can do wonders and you can change any of the situations of your great glory. And we pray, all these brothers and sisters, be blessed in the season of Easter. Be blessed in the season of Easter. We make this prayer through Christ the Lord. Amen. May the power blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit may descend upon you and remain with you forever. Have a wonderful day and God bless you.